Now suppose that the worst case running time for some algorithm is big O of n square. This implies that the algorithm is going to run in time less than or equal to c times n square for some large for all large values of n and for some constant c greater than 0 for every input of size n. If the worst case running time is bounded from above by c times n square, then every single then the running time for every single input of length n or size n is going to be bounded from above by c times n square. And this follows from a plot that we looked at previously where we represented the running times for different inputs of size n on the same plot and we got basically a cluster of points and if you recall we we claimed that the worst case running time is the function that connects together the topmost points for all values of n. Similarly, the best case running time was a function that connected together the bottommost running uh, times for all inputs uh, for, for inputs of all possible sizes. And the average case was a function that connected together the average of the running times over all inputs of size n where the average is computed according to a probability distribution which indicates how likely the different inputs of size n are. But the point is that if we just focus on the uh, worst case running time, so the point here is only about the worst case running time. If the worst case running time is big O of n square, this means that this function t of n can be bounded from above by some constant multiple of n square, then it means that t of n, so assuming that n is very large, t of n is going to be less than or equal to c times n square, assuming that n is, uh, you know, very, very large. It's, it's, it's beyond the threshold uh, that, that we talk about in the definition of the big O notation. So if t of n, the worst case running time is less than or equal to c, c n square, then it follows that all the other, all the other running times, the running times for other inputs of size n are definitely going to be less than or equal to c n square because t of n is the best, is the worst case running time. So it's the running time on the worst case input that particular input of size n which forces the algorithm to run the longest on any input of that size. So if the worst case running time is big O of n square, then every single running time for an input of size n is going to be big O of n square. But this doesn't hold for the theta notation. Suppose the worst case running time for some algorithm is theta of n square. And if you want to take an example, you could have taken the, uh, the example of insertion sort. Um, insertion sort has a worst case running time of theta of n square. But this doesn't imply that the algorithm is going to run in time theta of n square for every input of size n. Right, so if if I claim that t of n is theta of n square, does this imply, for example, that the best case running time will also be theta of n square? Well, not at all, because as we saw in the case of insertion sort, the best case running times of insertion sort was basically, uh, the best case running time was a function of n that was linearly going with n. So if I had connected the bottommost points here, I would have got a linear function in case of insertion sort. But the worst case was a quadratic function. 
So if the quadratic function is representing the worst case time is theta of, is, is theta of n square, this does not imply that the algorithm is going to run in time theta of n square for every input of size n. Right? For an algorithm to run in time theta in worst case time theta of n square, I need the, the running time t of n to be bounded from below and from above by two constant multiples of n square. So this must hold for all values of n that are very large, that are large enough, larger enough than some threshold. But just because t of n is uh, greater than or equal to c1 n square, does this imply that? So let's say this is this is t of n, right? This 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 is the function that is t of n, and this is the value of t of n for an input of size n. But just because this point is lies above the curve c1 n square, does that imply that? this bottom most point is also going to lie above c1 times n square. Well, no, that's not necessary. And in fact, we saw that for insertion sort, the best case, which was theta of n, would run significantly faster than the time taken in the worst case. So just because the worst case is theta of n square does not mean that the algorithm will run in time theta of n square for any input of size n. This is only a statement about the function that is representing the worst case running times. Similarly, suppose that the best case running time t of n for some algorithm is big omega of n. In other words, the best case running time is bounded from below by a constant multiple of n. So again, going, going back to that plot, the best case running time is going to connect together the bottom most points, the bottom most uh, running times. For all n. And if this is t of n, and if we say that t of n is big omega of n, what this means is that some constant multiple of n, some linear function, some constant multiple of n is going to serve as a lower bound for t of n once n gets large enough. Now, if the best case running time for an input of size n is going to be larger than or equal to c times n, it should be clear that the other running times for the same input size are also going to be greater than or equal to cn because the best case is really the minimum uh, value of the running time for an input of size n. So the minimum value of the running time at an input of size n is larger than or equal to cn, then the other running times at the same input size must also be larger than or equal to cn. Okay, so when, when, we, when we express the best case as big omega of n, we are actually making a statement about the running time for all inputs of size n. Similarly, when we express the worst case running time in terms of big O of some function, we are making a statement about the running times for all inputs of size n. If the worst case has, is, it has an upper bound, this upper bound is an upper bound for all inputs of size n. Similarly, if the best case is represented by a lower bound, then this lower bound is going to be a lower bound not just for the, for the algorithm in the best case, but in general for all inputs of size n. But that doesn't apply for the theta notation. Suppose the best case running time for some algorithm is theta of n. This does not imply that the algorithm will run in time theta of n for every input of size n. Because theta of n is representing both an upper and a lower bound. So if the best case, if the best case is 
bounded from below and from above by theta of n. This does not mean that the curve connecting the topmost points is also going to be bounded by uh, uh, some constant multiple of n. Right? We can have the best case sandwich between two constant multiples of n, as in case of insertion sort. But the worst case function is a quadratic function. A quadratic function cannot be sandwiched between two constant multiples of n. So, just because we can express the best case time as theta of n does not mean that this theta of n is going to tightly bound the running times for other inputs of size n. This is something we need to uh, note. Here's a more informal way to express what we just saw. An upper bound on the worst case time is going to be an upper bound on all inputs of that size. A lower bound on the best case time, so an upper bound on the worst case time is going to be an upper bound on all inputs of that size. A lower bound on the best case time is going to be a lower bound on all inputs of that size. Conversely, a lower bound on the worst case time is not necessarily a lower bound on all inputs of that size. And an upper bound on the best case time is not necessarily an upper bound on all inputs of that size. So these are the two cases we need to worry about. Uh, and we're saying that, so th these are the two cases which are making positive assertions. These two statements are there just to point out that we shouldn't assume that if the worst case running time is expressed in terms of a lower bound, that it applies in general to other times as well. So when we use upper bounds, it's uh, on worst case times, that gives us useful information about running times in general. Likewise, when we use a lower bound on the best case time, or when we have a lower bound on the best case time, we have something that generally applies to all inputs of that size. 